This video is about RGB lights. And whoa, whoa, before, before the comments start, I do recognize that it's a very heated discussion, whether you love them for their aesthetics or you think they're just a waste of system resources that cause your computer to run slower and hotter. I get that. But there is a small growing group of us that are functional lights, functional lights, functional lists. Yeah, something like that. That see RGB lights as something that can provide information. They can do something for you and they can have some nice aesthetics as long as they are functional. And this video is about one of the most popular functional uses of RGB light, and that is dynamic bias backlighting. You see, dynamic bias backlighting is the ability to capture what's on your screen and then replicate it as lights behind your screen so that it creates the illusion that your monitor is bigger than it actually is. It's born from bias lights that are static, which were designed to improve contrast and make eye strain decrease. This kind of gives it a little bit more dimension and feel to it. And in the past, I've either used Arduino kits or the cheap do-it-yourself pre-made ones that run Ambibox or Prismatic. These devices can be either built or acquired for somewhere between $20 to $50, and they appear to accomplish everything you would want from dynamic bias lights. But over the past few months, something's been eating at me. I wanted to know, are the commercial options actually better in any way? Some of these consumer RGB lights are $50 to $200 to $400 to set up the same thing I feel like my $20 kits can do. So I finally broke down and decided I was just gonna buy every single consumer solution on the market and test them all. And I went and looked and said, okay, NZXT makes one, Corsair makes one, Philips Hue lights make them. Let's just get them all, we'll try them, and we'll compare them to the $20 kit. And immediately I ran into a problem. You see, NZXT sells them and they have them on their website, but they've been sold out for months. And they've also been on sale for months. So I emailed the company and asked, hey, is this still a product that you're interested in selling? And I had my question immediately closed with no response. So I tried again, and I did get a response from somebody. Suffice it to say, I can't test the NZXT solution, which I'm really disappointed in because it looks really, really good, but I can't test it because I can't get it. So let's just scratch that one off the list. So the next one I went to was Philips Hue. And I actually went out and bought the play kit that is the big bars that go behind your screen or you can place them on the desk underneath it. What I noticed immediately was these are very bright, very vibrant colors. I tried them on my desk and I didn't capture footage at the time, but I was so impressed with them, I wanted to see how well they could light up my television. And I have a 65 inch TV and they come with adhesive back, so I attach them to the back of my TV. I was like, these are amazing. And then I discovered you can't remove them very easily. Finally, Corsair actually makes two solutions. You see, Corsair has been making RGB components for a long time, and I have a lot of them. So I have, I have an RGB keyboard, I have the RGB mouse pad, I have the RGB headphones. This is the Void. Yes, it's RGB that's controllable with the software, even though clearly when you're wearing them, you can't see your ears. Um, you can't see your ears ever. So anyways, it's RGB. And then I have their ridiculous headphone stand. So I have all these accessories and I was like, this, this is awesome. I'm gonna pick up one of their kits. And Corsair makes two different solutions. They have the LT100, which is their newest option, and they have the LS100, which is something they've had about a year, maybe coming up on two years, possibly. Um, the difference is the LS100 is a strip 
that's flexible that you attach to the back of the monitor, and the LT100 are towers that you place next to your monitor or behind it, um, but basically you place them on your desk and they have these light up RGB bars. They are both more than the do-it-yourself kit, so the performance from these obviously needs to be well beyond uh, what my kit can do, the build quality, all those things, customer support, all that stuff is really, really important. Uh, so let's start with the towers because they're newer um, and it's a little bit different. So these towers, you buy it, when you buy this kit, you get two of them and then you can buy expansion kits, which I went out and I bought two more because the most you can have is four of these. And I wanted to give Corsair the most opportunity to demonstrate just how great of a product this is. They're not paying me, they didn't provide it, I bought it myself, so I was like, I'm gonna give them the opportunity to wow me. So I got four of these. You'll notice that there's two of these base stations, two bars, and one of these. And the thing is, is the, the primary base station has a little button on the top, some pins that you can place this light bar into. And this is actually really cool. You can plug this in either direction. Corsair has designed this so that you can either have the RGB lights facing towards you, or you can have them reflecting off the wall. Whatever it is that you are particularly looking to do with your setup. That's awesome. The other thing that they have is three inputs, right? So they have a power, a data connection, power connection, and micro USB. And this is the first thing I noticed when I opened this up is that it's 2020, this is a brand new product, and it's not using USB-C, and Corsair has a terrible history of selecting the worst USB components they could possibly use when designing their equipment. My biggest complaint with the headphone stand is that it's powered with a USB-B, and this thing is terrible. Eventually, it just stops working because of that port. And so I'm a little discouraged by the fact that this has micro USB instead of USB-C, but let's see how well it works. So the first thing I did was I set it up so that the, the lights were facing to the wall, because this is gonna be competing with an, with an Ambibox prismatic solution. I thought it's gotta go against the wall. That's, that's really gotta be what it is. Was I set them up on my desk, I did two of them as the kit itself, you can see them back here on the monitor. I set them up and immediately I ran into problems. When I first plugged it in, I noticed that only one tower was showing up, but after multiple attempts to run and search, I finally got two towers to appear, only to discover that the two towers were number two and number three. There was no tower one. I finally decided after about an hour of messing around with the software, to plug in towers three and four, and there they were. Removing tower three and tower four immediately brought me back to the same issue, which was the software only recognized tower two and tower three. I was never able to get just two towers operating. I played around with the orientation of each of the towers and ultimately decided that the best positioning was one on each side of the monitor and then the other two somewhere about one third to the left and one third to the right within the monitor. I then ran the same calibration video I run for all of these setups, which I'll put a link to in the description in case you want to check it out. And I'll put a full video of this entire calibration up there as well. But here are a few highlights from that video. The expansion kits only have the data connection, power connections. They don't have USB, they don't have a power adapter, which is nice, which means you really only have to have power going to one of them. So you put that in with the one that's closest to your computer because it's probably also gonna be the one that's gonna be closest to a wall outlet or a power outlet. You then daisy chain these. And when I say daisy chain, the expansion packs actually come with data cables, these proprietary data cables that split off. They're not long enough to put them wherever you want. And that's kind of the second issue is where do these go? Because they're supposed to be replicating the light to expand the visual impression of the display size and fill up all your periphery. 
but they simply can't do that the way that they're advertised. The towers aren't tall enough. Sure, technically the towers are actually taller than a standard monitor is high, but since most people don't place their monitor directly on the desk, they have a gap between their desktop and the bottom of their display. This then manifests as towers that are just a little too short. And while Corsair did have the foresight to put in the ability to adjust what areas of the screen is captured for each individual tower, it still doesn't fix the fact that they're not tall enough to do the entire side of your display. I also want to address a complaint that other reviewers have made. People say they're not bright enough, and I disagree. Currently, all the overhead lights are on, and you can make out that each color being produced by the LEDs matches up with that on the screen. It looks even better in the dark. The issue isn't really the LED strips facing the wall, but rather the ones that aren't. Remember early on I said you can reverse them so you can point them towards you or away. But you can't reverse the bases. They're always shining at you. I think that's where the idea that these LED strips aren't bright enough are coming from. Because those bases are so bright because they're shining directly at you at all times, it makes the reflection off the wall appear dimmer. Prior to purchasing these things, I did make an attempt to contact Corsair my thought was I wanted to get proper expectations. I didn't want to assume these things could do something that they couldn't actually do, and it would be unfair to judge them based on these expectations. Since they never replied, they weren't even like NZXT where they replied at first and then they just haven't gotten back to me. I never heard a word from them. And so I bought them totally off the marketing. I'm using these and setting these up. I went to their website, I was looking for some help, there's no chat support as far as I can tell right now. They did have a 1-800 number, I called it. And the gentleman I spoke with was incredibly nice, incredibly polite, and did not work for Corsair. He kept referring to the company as Logitech, which makes me think that he was actually a call center that handled a bunch of different technology for different companies. But he was really eager and willing, and he kind of walked through it. And he did help with um, getting the towers up and running. We did not get the light strips working. As far as I'm aware, these light strips do not work. So let's move on to the LS100. And inside this box, you're gonna get a couple of things. You're gonna get two light strips, uh, two big ones, two little ones. And it seems pretty obvious that the little ones are designed to go on the sides of your monitor, the big ones designed to go on the top. And you get a little box which has the ability to plug in two different light strips and a power and micro USB. Uh, this is a little bit older solution. This came out probably about a year, maybe two years ago at this point. So it's a little bit more acceptable that this has micro USB, but at this price point, it really should be USB-C. You'll notice that when you're looking at these strips that they're kind of flexy and they can kind of move in any direction you want and that's not true at all. They really only move in this kind of axis. They don't bend very well the other directions. And you might be thinking, well, why does that matter? Well, if you pick up one of those new monitors that has the really aggressive curves, like the new Samsung G7 and G9, I think is what they're called, um, these are not going to bend to fit on the back of it. It's just not gonna work very well. Maybe you can get away with attaching it kind of this way instead of this way. But one, you're gonna be sending the light kind of in the wrong direction. And two, this may not work fundamentally because it doesn't actually stay on your monitor if your curve's really aggressive. So the actual kit comes with those four light strips, the box, and then it comes with actually adhesive magnets that use 3M tape, attaches to the back of your monitor, and then magnetically attaches. And it's a weird solution because the magnets aren't big enough to let you then move it anywhere you want on your monitor. So the only thing I can think of is if you have a really large laptop, and you wanted to attach this to your laptop, uh, you could take them off when you travel and just leave the magnets attached to your laptop and then when you get home, reattach them. Don't think of that as a solution for the sticky tape and being able to you know, remove it and reapply it, especially if you're trying to figure out exactly where they, should, where they should be on your monitor because that's not what they're designed for. At least that's not what I think they're designed for. So let's dive into the software. We'll take a closer look and see how well this works. 
So there's two different lighting channels corresponding to the two lighting channel ports that we saw on the hardware. There is then four modes that you can select from. A single monitor mode, a dual monitor mode, an ultra-wide single monitor mode, and an LED strip mode. The exception of selecting clockwise and counterclockwise for the direction of your LEDs, there's very little customization options available. You can't change exactly where an LED is located in terms of your monitor placement. You can't have the lower or upper longer strips curving to cover some of the sides. And you have to attach them to the back of your monitor in exactly the pattern that you're seeing on screen. Unlike the towers that resolved its problems when the two additional towers were added, adding the expansion strips, the two extra large LED strips, didn't fix this issue. Watch the LEDs blink as they move around counterclockwise. It's bouncing around, decidingly going from one strip to the next in any order it really wants to. And you might be thinking, the light bars are too big. I can see them on your desk. They're, they're too large. They, they wouldn't fit your monitor. And there is, in fact, a profile for ultra-wide, single ultra-wide monitors. So it should work. It doesn't. I have yet to make these work. The best I've gotten them to do is work wrong. They don't work with an ultra-wide monitor. I really wish they did. I really wish I could come back and tell you that these are great. Because I'd really hope to be able to say, hey, Let's try these compared to the do-it-yourself kit. And I can't do that if they don't work. So I feel like I failed you guys. Or maybe I just saved you $120. Let's imagine a world where these work. Because maybe they're defective. Maybe the ones I got were defective. Maybe it really is a problem that I can't do two of these uh, large ones on the top. And you might be wondering, but 60, I'm already invested in the Corsair ecosystem and I have a lot of their hardware. I want to use the Ambilight setup that synchronizes with all of those components because that would be really cool. And you're right, it would be really cool, except it doesn't work. You see, out of all of this Corsair stuff that I have, LS100s and the LT100s are the only devices that actually do the screen capture coding. Sure. There's some games that will work with some of this other stuff, like Far Cry 5, but you shouldn't be forced to have a game that synchronizes with your specific brand of lights. It should just capture what's on the screen and then transmit that to your devices and light them up. Well, 60, the reason why it doesn't work is because the hardware that you have there is older and it doesn't have the capability of being able to do dynamic backlighting. And gosh, I wish that was true. Because if you head over to Corsair's forums, you'll actually find a software package that someone developed that does screen capture monitoring to the keyboard. Somebody else made software that does exactly what you would expect Corsair to be doing with their RGB keyboards as far as the screen capture effects are. They just didn't implement it. I don't know why. So the hardware is capable of doing exactly what you'd like mirroring what's on the screen and displaying the colors on the device to match them. Sure, maybe not the most helpful when you're playing a game, but it could be a nice effect if you're watching a movie or you're watching a YouTube video and you want to have kind of that full immersion. I briefly talked before about the Hue Play and how I was so impressed with them. I attached them to the back of my television and see here that they're sufficiently bright Although I think I might end up getting a third one to put in the back there, to the back top. But I really wanted to demonstrate the Philips Hue solution for you. And I happen to have a few extra Philips Hue standard light bulbs. And having scoured Reddit and some other online forums, I came across a solution, which was just these sockets. This cost me $5. A white power cord, which cost me a dollar dollar uh, fifty plug it in plug it in screw in the bulb and then mount it behind the monitor and using the Philips Hue Play software we can get a look and see just how good these three light bulbs work compared to these other solutions now this isn't 
cheap, and this isn't going to be cheaper than a do-it-yourself kit or even one of those pre-made kits for Ambilight, nor is it going to be able to replicate the same amount of colors and kind of everything on there. But it might work, especially if you're already invested in the Hue program. So let's take a look and see how well this worked. It's very vibrant. As it's expected, we have three full-size LED light bulbs behind the monitor. They're currently located in the upper left-hand corner, upper right-hand corner, and then the upper portion just behind the webcam in the top center. Those three locations really fill up the wall, even though they're only on the top. But you'll notice as we move into some of the more complex animations that that limited three-point spot causes some problems. Do you see how when the square moves on the bottom of the monitor, no lights light up? That has to do with the fact that the lights are associated with the top left, top right, and top center of the screen. So when those areas light up, they light up very well and they capture the color that's on the monitor nearly perfectly, but there's nothing on the bottom. We could fix this by adding additional light bulbs on the bottom, but at around $45 a light bulb, that's not a cheap endeavor. The other issue with having such few light sources is that they have to average the color over a wider portion of the screen. This means that sometimes when you have two colors, they blend together and actually produce a color that is neither of the two colors on the screen. Now I know what you're thinking, light bulbs behind the monitor? That sounds dangerous because this is going to build up a ton of heat and it's going to cause some serious problems both in terms of thermals and they're going to just be touching stuff and they're going to be close. That sounds dangerous. But these light bulbs have been on for about an hour now while I've been testing this setup and they don't get hot. So I'm not terribly worried about thermals or adding additional heat to the room or anything like that. The same goes for the Hue Play. These are much wider, much longer than the individual light bulbs are, but they still have the same problem. They can only display one color at a time. So you might be wondering, okay, you have a do-it-yourself kit, you've got the Arduino kit, you've got the Corsair lights, both the towers and the strips, you've got the Hue lights, you don't have NZXT. Sorry guys, I really wanted to do that. How do these work with games? They work great, and honestly, all the solutions work decent enough. What does it come down to? Well, I still prefer the do-it-yourself Prismatic Ambibox solutions. Prismatic's definitely got the best response time with the highest frames per second. I really like the way Ambibox handles colors and it allows the customization of individual lights to make sure you're getting exactly what you like. And none of these solutions offer what Ambibox offers in terms of making sure that the light bouncing off the wall matches the color that's actually displaying on your monitor. That said, the Philips Hue solutions definitely provide the most vibrant colors. There's no question to me that when it comes to actually matching what's on the screen out of the box and just having that glow, that feel, these full-size light bulbs and the Hue Play bulbs really provide the best atmospheric colors whether it's dynamic or static. But that doesn't mean I don't like the Corsair solution. I like what Corsair is doing, and I really appreciate that they're taking the energy to actually try and come up with new ways to do this. I really wish they would invest a little bit more time in making sure that their entire ecosystem is up to date and reflects everything that can be done with them, especially since it's been demonstrated on their own website, that things like keyboards can actually be updated to do screen capture lighting effects. All their stuff at this point should be updated. I also wish that if they're going to charge a premium for their products, they use premium connectivity. Wi-Fi or wireless added would be an excellent solution and could definitely justify the price of $60 per tower. Mm, maybe. It's unfortunate because Corsair's really got some good stuff going on and I really hope that they're able to keep innovating and keep providing some really cool RGB effects, especially if they're functional. Hey, baby. You want to help? So I went... <laughs> 